The video review will start in a few seconds, but if you're watching this on YouTube, remember if you have a question, comment, or suggestion for me, you can post it on 3dgameman.com and the link is provided below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds from 3dgameman.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Cooler Master Sidon 240 Liquid CPU Cooler. A great looking box that has lots of pictures, features, as well as specifications about the product on it. Also note that it comes wrapped in plastic so you know no one else has been inside. Let me unpack this and see what is inside. Everything is individually packed here. All the materials needed for installing it on the CPU socket, installation instructions, two 120 millimeter fans, and the unit itself. And note that just about everything is wrapped in plastic. Now first, let me go over these specifications. I'll start with the radiator. This is a 240 millimeter all aluminum radiator. It measures in at 273 by 120 by 27 millimeters. They include two 120 millimeter pulse with modulation fans and each of these fans come with a four pin lead and a nice braided cable. They also include this adapter for those two fans to get connected in. And then this lead will get connected into the motherboard's four pin CPU fan header. Now these are 12 volt fans. They draw point two amps. The fan speed is anywhere from 600 to 2400. The airflow is from 19 to 86. The noise level is from 19 to 40 decibels and they have rifle bearings inside of them and the life expectancy is around 40,000 hours. Now considering how small this 12 volt pump is, it's only 70 by 27 millimeters it can really push a lot of liquid and it's really quiet at only 25 decibels and it will last pretty much forever around 70,000 hours. There are lots of these ALCs or advanced liquid coolers or some people like to call them all in one liquid coolers on the market and there's a reason for that. People are looking for a cooler that will really do the job especially if you're overclocking but they don't necessarily want to jump to the traditional water cooling setup. Now a traditional water cooling setup will give you better performance than an advanced liquid cooler. However, if you're looking for something that's affordable, easy to install, and you do not have to worry about leaks and you know all the other components and tubes and all that kind of stuff, an ALC is definitely the way to go. Now there's a reason why they call these AIOs or all-in-ones. It's because, well, everything is together. You have the water block, the pump, the tubes, the radiator, the fans, everything is in one sealed unit. Now I should note that some companies will actually rebrand the entire advanced liquid cooler. They'll put their name on it and that's it. They didn't put really any of their own design or parts into the build. Now that's not the case here. Like for example, this water block. It is a nice size, it covers a great surface, it's smooth, and it has channels on the back. I'll show you a picture of it on the screen right now so you can have an idea what I'm talking about. This will help the pump push and move that liquid over these channels and dissipate the heat better. Now a lot of these advanced liquid coolers will come with thermal compound already applied on the water block. That's not the case here. It's good and bad because when the thermal compound is already applied on the water block it really does take the guesswork out of it especially for anyone who's not used to applying thermal compound but for everyone else it really doesn't matter a whole lot and it's good that they include a whole tube of thermal compound. The tubing that they include is tough, fairly flexible, nearly no moisture absorption as well. It has a high thermal stability and a high pressure tolerance. And that's exactly the type of tubing that you want because you do not want to spring a leak. Now just look at how the tubes are connected to the water block pump and the radiator. It's top-notch quality so it's not going to disconnect. Now before installing the fans on the radiator, you will need to install this rubber mount 
that they have for the fans. You would just lay this up like so and place the fans into it and then use the screws to attach the fans to the radiator. Basically, this is there to cut down on vibrations. And you can really suit yourself on which side you want to install the fans on, the opposite side or this side. And of course, if you want even better performance, you can have fans installed on this side and the other side. Now let's have a closer look at the top of this water block pump housing. Looks quite nice. Notice that there is a blue status LED. Yes, it is on right now and just have a listen. You can hardly hear it. The pump lead is braided and has a three pin end so you can connect it into the motherboard's three pin fan header. Note that they have arrows. This indicates the liquid flow, liquid in and liquid out. Now have a listen to the entire unit turned on but trust me, you're not going to hear the pump over the two fans because these fans in this test are at full speed. So keep that in mind. You can adjust them from 600 to 2400 RPMs. You really can't go wrong with this cooler. It is inexpensive, easy to install when you compare it to a traditional water cooling setup and it performs exceptionally well. Overall, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. I hope you enjoyed this video review and please note that pricing for this product is available on the 3D Game Man video review page.